Where would you be if you bought one sealed case of every single set that Pokemon has released for the past 10 years? Well, I crunched the numbers and I'm going to tell you guys right now. Now we have... Uh, these are booster box cases or elite trainer boxes if only only ETBs were available. These prices are a little high for the purchase price. You definitely could have got these for cheaper. Okay, keep that in mind for both. I mean, and they were readily available if you would have been buying in 2014 when XY and all these sets were coming out. You could have easily got these for cheaper. Okay, don't worry. At the end of the video, I have the total cost, the sale price, the profit, and then after the fees. We're talking after fees, after shipping. Okay. Also keep in mind that it can be hard to move these products. It's not like you can just unload a bunch of these uh, flash fire booster boxes like instantly, okay? So uh, you'd have to keep that in mind that this would be a lot of work to sell all this stuff, but I just wanted to show you guys what Pokemon investing over the last 10 years would do, including where we're at now, including having paid for like the most recent set but not having gotten it. Like that's all factored in here and it's, it's very interesting. And also I wanna be upfront, like most people wouldn't have the patience to wait this long they'd have sold way long ago but if you had the patience to just buy every set blindly every set just blindly buying every set and you still had one set right buy one set held it the whole time this is where you'd be at starting with xy you'd have a 1300 percent gain flash fire 2300 percent gain 923 for furious fists 2000 for phantom forces 500 for P primal clash Roaring Skies at 500, 1100% for Ancient Origins, Breakthroughs at 600, Breakpoints at 636, we got Generations at a 1200%, Fates Collide 500, and then there's some sets that aren't doing quite as good for their age, Steam Siege is only at 369%, um, Evolutions 775, Sun and Moon 258, Guardians Rising 396%, Burning Shadows right 369 Shining Legends we got at 677%, Crimson Invasion 230, Ultra Prism 627, Forbidden Light 424, Celestial Storm's doing good, 784% gain there. Um, also, I, I don't know if I touched on this, that the uh, ETBs are a case of 10, booster boxes are a case of 6, so that's what these prices are. Uh, Dragon Majesty 877%, Lost Thunder 620%. And then you got, obviously, the crazy team up, 2,100%. Unbroken Bonds and Unified Minds in the 600s. Then Hidden Fates not doing as good at 388%. Cosmic Eclipse, 1,000%. Then we're getting into the more modern stuff, right? We're, we're, we're going to see percentage gains that aren't quite as good. It's all factored in, so it's very interesting. Um, Sword and Shield, 268%. Rebel Clash, 198%. Darkness Ablaze, 143%. Champion's Path, 222. Vivid Voltage, 124. Shining Fate's not doing so good, about even. Uh, but like I said, you could have gotten these prices better, um, honestly. So this would you should be up on a, a lot of these. A lot more. 132% uh, for Battle Styles. Chilling Rains at 200%. The uh, Pride and Joy of Sword and Shield. Evolving Skies at 646%. Profit. Celebrations, 184 Fusion Strike, 226. Brilliant Stars, 168. Astral's at 147%. Pokemon Go, you're losing technically if you bought at this price. Lost Origin, 195%. Silver Tempest, 152. Crown Zenith, 115. Scarlet and Violet Base, if you bought at this price, you're kind of losing right now. Paldea, 126%. Obsidian, barely, 108% up. Uh... 133% for 151, Paradox Rift, you're losing, Paldean Fates, you're losing, Temporal, you're losing, Twilight Masquerade, you're up, you know, 112%. And uh, also these numbers, sorry, it's the way it does the percentage is you'd be up 12% off your, you can see the numbers here, right? So, um, but yeah, this is just the percentage, percentage of this, so um yeah, you have to factor in the original price. So sorry, that's just how the formula worked. Um, then I even put on here um, Shrouded Fable because they're not out yet. So say you pre-ordered a case, you're at 0%. Stellar Crown, same thing. You pre-ordered a case of boosters, you're at 0%. So let, we have factored it all in. Now when we come up here to our total cost, what would we have spent um, over 10 years for all of these? For one of everything, you're looking at 33000 three hundred and fifty dollars 
Now, that does seem like a lot of money, but over 10 years, that's, what is that, just over three grand? 3350 $3,300 a year? That's it. That's not that much, right? So, very doable by most people. Um, obviously, not everybody has that kind of money that they can put into stuff like this, but three grand a year, right? Then let's take a look at the sale price and you'll be, you'll be thinking, man, maybe I, maybe I really should start this. Take this off here. 169,000. So you took $33,000 investment and you were able to sell it for 169,000. Now the profit after that profit is $136,000 because obviously you had the 33 investment. Now for the fees here, I went and just did 80% because um, depending on where you're selling, you know, eBay, TCG player, uh, maybe some card shows, I, you're going to have to sell a lot of places to unload a lot of this stuff and it's going to take work. But there's shipping fees and selling fees, right? So um, just keep in mind that you're after your fees, you'd be at $109,000. So essentially you would have turned... 33,000 into 109,000. Now, how much work that would be? Uh, that's, you know, that, that's a different question. That's a lot of boxes um, to sell. It's 56 sets currently. And that that's a lot of boxes to have, have to sell. But uh, I just wanted to make this video and kind of just talk about um, blind, blindly investing. Now this is blindly investing in Pokemon, just buying a case of everything. And I think that you, uh, obviously on the buying prices, you could have done much better. Okay. And you can also, it, it, it's, we've gotten to a point where I think it's easy to, uh, at least at some point, identify the better sets, right? So like right now with where we're at in Scarlet and Violet, you know, we can tell like Paldea and Twilight are kind of leading the way for booster boxes currently. So it's easy to identify that those are the better sets. So you you could have been along this way if you were able to identify what the better sets were before they went like astronomical. Uh, you could have uh, maybe offloaded some of the lesser sets, picked up some of the ones that you thought were better. But I just wanted to, if you're just throwing everything at a wall and just seeing what sticks... Um, that's not, those are not bad numbers. And some of that you have to keep in mind, print runs and everything. And will you be able to replicate that on a 10 year period moving forward? Now, I don't know. I don't know necessarily if we're going to be seeing quite those numbers moving forward with print runs and everything, but you do have to consider one thing that I love is even you know, once they get out of their print window and they're not being printed anymore, the supply is just steadily going down. Every time a box is opened, the supply is going down. Uh, you just don't get that with, with singles, with, with PSA 10s, with raw singles. That supply is always going up because they're opening the boxes, but the boxes are always going down unless there's a reprint. But like I said, you have to get out of that. Once you get out of that reprint window and Pokemon could definitely, they can reprint any set they want any time if they really wanted to. Uh, but so far, as far as English goes, they haven't, uh, they haven't proven to do that. So just with everything that's going on in the world, there's a lot of people talking about the recession and what, what is that going to mean? Well, I just wanted to maybe shed a little bit of positivity on um, some Pokemon investing. Uh, and I'm uh, personally... With everything that's going on, I'm not really worried about uh, recession, and it's not really going to be affecting my uh, Pokemon investing or collecting. If anything, um, this might be the time to to double down, per se, to zig when everyone is zagging, uh, if prices go down. But it seems like, as far as the sealed uh, going, it's holding steady. Like I don't really see it it tanking per se if, if it drops a little it drops a little but uh the the sealed pokemon market has proven to be very steady and reliable so um let me know what your guys's thoughts are on this i just kind of wanted to touch 
um, on these 56 sets of the last 10 years. And I, it's, it was kind of fun just to crunch those numbers. It took some time to look everything up. But um, let me know what you guys think. It, is blindly investing in just every set a good strategy? Let me know. Um, but yeah, it, it makes me wish that um, at least in 2016, like when Pokemon Go was popping off, and I was, well, man, I was deep in Pokemon Go. Like I should have, I should have connected those dots and got on this sooner. Um, but you know, not everybody can be perfect, right? It's that that's if you play that game, it's like, well, I also I, you know, when I was eight years old, I should have been buying base set first edition boxes and just hoarding them. You know, <laughs> uh, you can play that game forever, right? But I didn't, and we're here now, so we can only take the the data that we have, learn from it, and move forward. So. Um, that's gonna do it for this one guys. Thank you so much for watching if you're this far in the video and you're not already subscribed Obviously you enjoyed the content So if you could subscribe hit the like button and then maybe hit the notification bell um, while you're there I noticed I think in my analytics it showed like only 2% have the notification uh, Bell enabled so if you guys want to stay up to date on when I post my latest videos um, That would mean a lot to me, but uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one and remember it was never a phase